I'm here with Bill Alec, and it looks like, Bill, you have two different projects. Yeah, we got two projects here. Okay, okay so one is UFO Skywatch, which is pretty much Aurora's, you know, that's Aurora's idea here. Okay. And we use uh, third generation military grade night vision equipment. And uh, we basically look for UFOs in the nighttime sky. And we have one of these hooked up to a webcam, and we broadcast out through Ustream. So we do oh, live uh, okay. internet broadcast. Well, I, I guess the first question would be, uh, where can people view this? Well, uh, just by going to this website, ufoskywatch.com. ufoskywatch.com, okay. And that's where we have all the details. You know, people can subscribe to the archives. Uh, lately, we've been getting a lot of monsoon weather down in Phoenix, which pretty sure you're aware of. Yeah, we've gone through three of those and, ourselves. And uh, those, those sandstorms are wicked. You know? And uh, so uh, I really haven't been able to do a sky watch in, in about a month and a half because of the monsoon weather. It's about every evening it's been cloudy. Okay. But uh, we're waiting for the skies to clear up so that we'll resume our sky watches again. Now, Plus I've been upgrading my equipment. Oh, okay. So uh, what, what, what does the... Uh, now looking at it with the, let me focus in on the night vision goggles. Um, what does that show you that you might not otherwise see? Well, on a city night, you might see maybe a couple of dozen stars. But uh, with the night vision, it uses uh, a light intensifier too in there, which gives you true night vision. No, it's not infrared. It's, oh, so it's not it's IR. Not you're, infrared. you're talking about a starlight system. Yeah, then. because infrared, you're emitting heat. In this case, you're just working with the light amplifying tube. Okay. Okay. So in a way, you get uh, what they refer to as true night vision with these goggles. But instead of, you know, just looking around, you know, the neighborhood there, you just turn them up. And, uh, and what you'll see up there is rather amazing. You know, there's a lot of activity going on up there. Uh, things that ordinarily you wouldn't see, okay, with the human eye. Yeah, and, and and again, you guys post video of this on UFOSkyWatch.com. Yes, yes, we do. Now, now the, the other project that you have is the smartwatch. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm, you work with microelectronics. That's that's your career, so. Right. Well, you know, Hoagland, Richard Hoagland, he gave me a call a couple of months ago for the, the eclipse that came up. You know, the solar lunar eclipse that occurred a couple of months ago. And then, of course, the Venus transit that also occurred a few weeks after that. So, Hoagland, he gives me a call, you know, asking me to, uh, you know, just resurrect the equipment here, the Accutron system. So, uh, so I said, sure, you know, I'll, I'll get it activated again here. And then this project here, um, so this is a project that uh, is the next generation of what Hoagland's been using. So I call it the smartwatch system. It's going to be 10 times more precise than what Hoagland is currently using. So I consider this the next generation device. Mm, okay, and so you're using this to measure gravitational anomalies and... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, w when that eclipse occurred, I was broadcasting live on Ustream. Okay, the, uh, you know, any sort of anomalous activity occurring you know, with, with, the, uh, with the moon between the Earth and the sun, okay? And I, and I started picking up a very tiny uh, anomalous activity there with, with the gravity influence of the, of the moon. But with this new device, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to really pick up the, uh, the activity of just the moon, just the sun and moon going overhead. It should be able to detect that. Now, since it's going to be 10 times more precise. Oh, okay. So this just brings a new level of precision to yes. the Accutron. Yes. Now, it, it, does this work essentially by measuring two, two of the, the, the highly accurate tuning forks and then seeing what the difference yeah, in frequency it's, well, is? Yeah, it's the tuning fork that's built into the Accutron. And there's a double coil arrangement in there. And what you have is a pickup coil that induces you know, a current voltage you know, into the secondary coil. So it's like a little transformer arrangement. And I run that into this, uh, 
uh, some conditioning circuitry, and then I process the frequency. So the, the tuning fork gun, this is built into the Accutron. Right. And and then the changes the changes in it from the anomalies go into the oscillator. And yeah, then there's a 125 megahertz oscillator that I'm using. Uh, what this other fellow did with his, what Hoagland is currently using, uses uses a 16 megahertz crystal. I'm using 125, so that's going to give me, when I work out the math, it's going to give me 10 times the precision, you know, of what uh, Hoagland's currently using. So anybody who's doing experiments then, where they think that there might be some kind of a time-space fluctuation or something like exactly. that, they, yes. they could use the smartwatch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, plus the one that I'm coming out with, it's going to be sealed in mu metal. So it's going to be magnetically uh, sealed. Now, the, the, the one that Richard Hoagland is using, you developed that, didn't you? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah, yeah, Hoagland is using equipment that I developed for him. That's that's what I recall, but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. um, so you're really just kind of trying to take this to the next level. and Exactly. And it's something that I've been thinking about for years, but I'm just starting to get back into the game here. Yeah. Uh, doing this research. Well, and, and they can learn more about this at smartwatchsystem.com, and I'll, I'll get the yes. URL there. Yeah, all the details are there. Smartwatchsystem.com. Great. Well, thanks again, Bill. Okay. Great. Thank you.